Ireland has long held a very special place in my heart. My daydreams have often led me wandering down lush green trails, through sprawling pastures, past cobblestone walls, but no amount of my idle daydreaming could have prepared me for the undeniable beauty of the Emerald Isle. From the rugged coastline and idyllic small towns in the west, to the modern metropolis of Dublin in the east, Ireland is one of the most extraordinary and fascinating places to visit in Europe. Castles and quaint towns, scholars and poets, greenery and Guinness. It's all quintessential, and it's all Ireland. Galway City is a metropolitan city by Western Ireland standards. With a fascinating history dating back to medieval times, Galway is now a town bursting with life. The street scene is lively, complete with buskers, brightly painted pubs, and a multitude of shops. Nearly a quarter of its 76,000 citizens were born outside of Ireland, which gives Galway a unique international flair. Spend time relaxing with locals or shop till you drop. Just don't forget to stop in a local pub and order a Galway hooker a local Irish pale ale. Galway is also home to the Collegiate Church of St. Nicholas, the largest medieval parish church in Ireland still in use today. This sizable church sits in the middle of what was once the medieval heart of Galway City. Finished in 1320 AD, this church is dedicated to the patron saint of mariners and children, St. Nicholas of Myra, but you may know him better by his nickname, Santa Claus. Look down, and you'll notice that you're standing on grave markers, a common practice in many medieval European churches. In 1651, Oliver Cromwell's troops used this church as a stable for their horses while they laid siege to the town. It is those troops that are blamed for the missing heads and hands of statues all around the church. It's believed that in 1477, Christopher Columbus himself worshiped here before one of his attempts to reach the new world. Galway's lifeblood is its street scene, so give yourself ample time to stroll along its medieval roads. From the 13th through the 19th centuries, Galway was run by the famous 14 tribes, or more accurately, powerful families of Galway. Of those 14 tribes, the Lynch family was by far the most powerful, with 84 Lynches becoming mayor of Galway over a 169-year span. Lynch's Castle, now an allied Irish bank, is the only castle still standing that belonged to one of the 14 tribes. In the city center is Air Square. It is here, in the center of Air Square, where you will find another monument to the 14 tribes, the Brown Doorway. This facade is the former entrance to the Brown House of 1627. In 1905, it was removed from its original location and placed here. Adjacent to that, you'll find the Galway Hooker, a modern art fountain erected in 1984, designed to celebrate the sales of the fishing vessel known as the Galway Hooker. Just off of Air Square, you'll find a tiny pocket of a park known as the John F. Kennedy Memorial Park. It is here that JFK himself addressed Galway in 1963. The King's Head Pub on High Street in the Latin Quarter has occupied this spot for over 800 years. 
once home to the Lynch mayors of Galway, in 1654 it was seized from him by one of Oliver Cromwell's henchmen, Colonel Peter Stubbers. It is believed that Stubbers was in fact the man that executed King Charles I, thus prompting the name of the pub, the King's Head. Burren National Park offers some of the best hiking in Ireland. While hikes often consist of many steps and rocky, uneven footpaths, the Burren's beauty more than makes up for the sore feet. Upon first glance, it may seem as though the Burren is 10 square miles of desolate, rocky landscape with little discernible life. But after closer inspection, a delicate and diverse ecosystem begins to unfold, providing the hiker with an experience unlike any other. The rocky terrain, narrow passages, and jagged inclines are all worth it, however, when you get views like this. Throughout the Burren, you'll also find the crumbling remains from its Iron Age inhabitants, who lived here 6,000 years ago. The town of Doolan, often referred to as the music capital of Ireland, is spread along the coastline of the Atlantic Ocean, just north of the Cliffs of Moher. Doolan's lively music scene is best enjoyed in its small pubs like McDermott's and Gus O'Connor's. Even with the tourists now flocking to this once off-the-grid town, the Doolan musicians still offer top-notch performances on a nightly basis. Doolan Cave, just north of the town's main B&B area, is home to the world's second largest stalactite. Friendly and knowledgeable guides lead guests down 125 steps, 210 feet below the earth to the main cavern, where they can behold the 8 million year old natural formation. You're going to see engineering at its very best. It's a combination of the man-made and the natural Doolan Cave. So be careful when you're descending the 125 steps, there is no Elevator. Doolan Cave is an undiscovered gem of sorts. While the Cliffs of Moher, just south of Doolan, receive over 11 million visitors per year, only a minuscule fraction of those guests, around 23,000, make their way to Doolan Cave. So while the tour buses are making their way to the Cliffs of Moher, you can take the road less traveled and visit Doolan Cave. This tiny hole is where brave spelunkers J.M. Dickinson and Brian Varley entered when they discovered the stalactite back in 1952. Luckily, today's guests are treated a bit better with these much larger hallways. Be warned, however, that this tour does involve a lot of tight spaces, and if you're very tall, like my friend Ben, you may have to walk doubled over at the waist. This is the world's second largest stalactite at 7.3 meters, which is about 23 feet. It is a wonderful sight to behold. The Cliffs of Moher stand proudly as one of the greatest natural wonders of the world, and no trip to Ireland would be complete without a visit. While there are tours that will take you directly to the top, complete with visitor center and gift shop, if you're physically able, there's nothing like hiking the whole length of the coast. Start from Doolan and hike the Burren Way. The Burren Way is a three-mile hike with often rocky terrain, steep ascents, and vertigo-inducing proximity to the edge. But this hike is a hike that will remain in your memory for a lifetime.
Blarney Castle is one of the best known sites in all of Ireland, but not for any real historical reasons. Blarney Castle is most famous for being famous. Queues can be massive, but we are here in the evening after many of the tour buses have come and gone for the day. While Blarney Castle has almost no historical significance, for centuries, tourists have been schlepping up to the highest turret of this medieval castle and kissing the Blarney Stone in the hopes of receiving the Irish Gift of Gab. While it may be one of the greatest tourist traps in Ireland, the Blarney Castle is still worth a visit, if for no other reason than bragging rights. Once inside, you'll venture through several small medieval rooms and hike up lots of even smaller medieval staircases until, at last, you reach the highest point of the castle to kiss the Blarney Stone. After you kiss the stone, take time to explore the well-manicured grounds if time allows, especially the Poison Garden. finally made it to Dublin. We only have a few days in this bustling city, so we're hitting the major hotspots, including the Temple Bar Nightlife District, the famous Trinity College, home of the Book of Kells, and of course, the Guinness Storehouse. Dublin is a big little city. It's full of things to do and see, but you can practically walk its entirety in just a few hours. Dublin is a fun place to be, and the history of this town is fascinating, tragic, and triumphant. Dublin is a very walkable city, and I highly recommend taking a walking tour. A good walking tour will help solidify the city in your mind and orient you as to where everything is and how the streets are laid out. It's also a great way to learn some of the history of the city, which will help you understand Dublin as a whole. You may also see places that maybe weren't on your original itinerary, such as the City Market, or this building, City Hall. Good tour guides give you the lay of the land, as well as the history behind the bricks.
Trinity College is one of the most recognizable and important sites in Dublin. The campus is free to enter and you can walk around on your own, but in order to truly understand the significance of this place, I highly recommend taking advantage of the student-led tours. Tours depart from the College Green area and last 30 to 40 minutes. Trinity was founded in 1592 by Queen Elizabeth I for Protestant male students. The school was only open to Protestants until 1793, when admission to Catholics was finally allowed. However, the Catholic Church forbade enrollment. Before 1970, any Catholic that enrolled at Trinity would be excommunicated. Trinity College boasts some pretty famous alumni as well, including Oscar Wilde and James Joyce. The biggest crowd draw at Trinity College is the Book of Kells, an ancient text that was handcrafted by monks around 800 AD, located in this building. Unfortunately, no cameras are allowed inside, so you'll have to make the trip if you want to see it yourself. The Long Room, which is the main chamber of the old library, is over 200 feet in length and contains over 200,000 of the library's oldest books, Easily one of the world's most impressive libraries, it has served as the inspiration for libraries and famous movies such as Star Wars and Harry Potter. The Long Room is also home to other treasures, including this harp, a famous symbol of Ireland which is found on the Irish Euro and on every bottle of Guinness. This document is one of only a handful of remaining copies of the 1916 Proclamation of the Irish Republic, which is read on April 24, 1916, outside the General Post Office by Patrick Hearse, and set into motion the Easter Rising. After a long, intellectual afternoon, Give your tired mind a break and head to St. Stephen's Green, a nature oasis in the bustling city. Enjoy a picnic or simply sit, relax, and watch life go by for a short time. The Guinness Storehouse is a high priority on the list of many a Dublin visitor. The current building, built in 2000, is shaped like a glass and is referred to as the world's largest pint. Guinness has been brewed at the St. James Gate Brewery on this site since 1759, when Arthur Guinness signed a 9,000-year lease with the city of Dublin, the very lease that can be found in the floor of the main lobby. The Guinness Storehouse is a veritable museum of Guinness consisting of seven floors dedicated to the delicious brew. You'll get an overview of its basic ingredients, yeast, hops, and of course, water. You'll also learn about some of the history of the brewery through movies, pictures, and other exhibits. As you slowly make your way to the top, you'll see some areas dedicated to some of the more famous, if somewhat odd, advertising campaigns of the past, as well as restaurants and bars. At the top of the pint sits the Sky Bar, reason enough for making the trip to the Guinness Storehouse. 
Bartenders masterfully pour the black gold into pint glasses, and each person gets one included in their admission. While the exhibits are interesting, it's worth coming to the Guinness Storehouse for nothing more than enjoying a pint with this bird's eye view of the city. Tonight, we're taking a self-guided tour of O'Connell Street, a main thoroughfare in the heart of the city. This relatively short stretch of road has had more than its fair share of major historical events that have irrevocably shaped the course of Dublin's past and present. This, for instance, is the General Post Office, the site where the fight for Irish independence began in 1916. To this day, bullet holes can still be found in the building's columns. This landmark, on the other hand, known as the Spire, has no historical significance and is dedicated to nothing. It is simply a 120 meter high shiny pole. We are going to the Brazen Head, which is the oldest pub in Ireland. The Temple Bar District is full of pubs, bars, and tourists. These cobbled streets have long been the site of Dublin's party scene, and while you may find more locals in areas such as the Purple Flag District, this fun-loving area is still definitely worth a visit. <laughs> 